And now I'm excited to introduce our first moderator, Layla Bolton, executive editor and editor of Special Reports for the Financial Times, for a conversation with European mayors on their experience responding to the ongoing COVID-19 crisis. Hi, Layla. So glad to have you back with us again. You closed the last forum with a wonderful conversation on the role of cities achieving the global sustainable development goals. We're so glad to have you back, even if we can not do it all live here together in Chicago. Thank you, Ivo. It's wonderful to be here with you all, albeit virtually, rather than one of my favorite cities. As Ivo said, I'm the editor of FT Special Reports, and my colleagues and I will be publishing next month's special report on the future of cities. With me to explore how to manage the competing priorities facing cities in the age of COVID are two very special European leaders, Mayor Orlando of Palermo and Dublin's Lord Mayor Chu. As here in the UK, we face the first big clash between local and national leaders over new restrictions for hotspots in the north of England, in this case, Italy and Ireland appear to have maintained a relatively cohesive stance on coronavirus. Mayor Orlando, you've compared coronavirus to the mafia. Tell us how this achieved a degree of unity on the pandemic and what other measures did you take to reinforce this solidarity? Thanks for your attention. I wish just to say that in Palermo we are accustomed to fight against the mafia and they were ready to fight against the virus. Because I think that Palermo was able to fight and is able today to fight against the virus because uh, has lived the terrible, the terrible experience to try and finally to be free from the government of the mafia. We won and we wish to win another time because we have a vision. We think that uh, we need to be free from the fair. And to be free from the fair, as uh, uh, Roosevelt said, we need to take care. We need to take care. And we take care of the, of the human uh, beings. Palermo has a vision. In Palermo, we respect the human rights because the lesson of the fight against the mafia was not only to say that we want to respect the law, but we want to respect the human rights. Therefore, when people ask to me how many migrants are in Palermo, I do not reply 80,000 or 90,000. I reply no one who lives in Palermo is Palermitan. I make no distinction between who was born in Palermo and who lives in Palermo. Therefore, Palermo is today exciting, safe, and not expensive. Exciting. Because uh, uh, that's like a rainbow of different colors just living together. Safe. We are in Italy uh, criminally the safest city. And we have been the safe city in, in the fight against the virus. Among 107, just the city, uh, being the capital of province, Palermo is the last. Less infected, less death. Because we demonstrated that we have discovered the fight the mafia, how important is the life. And we wish to go, of course, forward on this way. And the mayor, the mayor has to, to be a local authority but needs just uh, to be a local authority in a world where we live in a global dimension. Uh, we, there is nothing so global like the virus. Imagine, the, the virus is more global than the Second World War. The other global activity in the world is digital. So the mayor has to be near to the people, to touch the people, but has just to use the digital system to let the people be a community. So I can say that I feel my, me, I feel me just like a start-up of Mayo. Imagine, the first time I was at the Mayo for 1985, 1985, and in 2020, I feel a start-up of Mayo, because after virus, we had to change our perception of the time, our perception of the space, our relations with economic activities, our contribution to economic development. We have to take care 
of the human rights just using digital, not letting the citizen be used by digital. It's just our position. So I can say that Palermo is a city that fights against the virus, has fight against the mafia. Repeating, I am a person that is against uh, the individualist, and we are, uh, we are a community that is against uh, the closed groups of clans, of family, just closed and not having relation with the other. So I think that uh, the virus uh, is a, a dramatic and, but positive opportunity to change. We hope to be able to go outside from the tunnel uh, better than before we came inside the tunnel. Palermo has become a touristic city. And we are seeing that our attraction for the tourists is strong. So we are attractive for the migrants because migrants know that coming to Palermo, they are respected as human beings. And the tourists know that arriving in Palermo, they are considered a Palermitan. So I think that we have to preserve, taking care of the city from the, from the fear. We want to be uh, free from the fear, as I said and as I repeat. And I think that is the role of the cities, because the, the city are something like an educational agency, an educational agency, because uh, we need, of course, national level, we need, of course, uh, the international level, but the daily life of the people pass through the words, the activities of the mayors. So I say, Welcome, and uh, I send my greetings and my best wishes to my colleague just speaking from Dublin. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mayor Orlando. Uh, Lord Mayor Chu, as the first Lord Mayor of Chinese descent, you have also stressed the importance of inclusion of other. And um, how do you see your role as contributing to this uh, inclusion in a time of isolation for, for many. Well, firstly, thank you for having me and uh, thank you for the kind words, uh, Mayor Orlando, and I wish yourself and your citizens well. Um, in terms of inclusion and diversity, it's, it's hard to have push any policy or agenda through when you have such a, um, a challenge in terms of the pandemic and in terms of uh, what everyone is going through, because it's, it's tough. It's tough for all that's involved in it. So, and it's tough for those that are trying to steer a direction and uh, steer policy as well. For my part, inclusion is, is vital, especially during pandemic, because you will notice that um, the pandemic um, takes no prisoners. It is very much, it, it doesn't discriminate against uh, gender or culture, but what it does, however, is it will affect the marginalized more because if you are in a uh, 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 if you are from a poorer background or if you are from a migrant background, more than likely you are in environments that you can't socially distance in and you are in working environments that are that you can't socially distance in or can't adhere to restrictions as much in. And, and as such, you will have you will have uh, you will uh, have that transmission, and this is why inclusion is important because I think the more diverse we are as a society, and they're more openly inclusive. What will happen is it becomes a fairer community, and across the board, then you have that sense of not only community of taking care of each other, but you will also have that equality as well. That people won't be in environments that they are more likely to contract the uh, virus. So um, the agenda for me is more important now than any other time uh, of the in inclusion and integration agenda. But also overall, my my remit has changed massively. The role have, has gone from a ceremonial role to a very policy driven role to a very action objective driven role. Uh, to um, Mayor uh, Orlando's point, it, it's about the citizens and their buy-in and keeping everyone safe. And that's what we've been trying to do this year. Um, in in terms of championing diversity, I think um, the, the very fact that um, the good citizens and the councillors elected me was a good reflection of where we were heading in terms of diversity and having a more diverse space within politics in Ireland uh, and in Dublin. But there's still a long way to go, Lena. Like we're at 
21 percent uh, in the council when it comes to female versus male. We're in 22 percent when it comes to the doll, which is uh, at the, at the main ruling house. And then you have 30 percent in the Shannon, which is uh, the uh, lower house. So so it is it's a massive uh, uh, imbalance there that we need to address. Thank you so much. Um, Mayor Orlando, how do you actually win the argument? Populism has been a very powerful force in Italian politics over the last few years. So what does it take to actually get people on your side? Is it a lot to do with material support for people in a pandemic, making sure that people really feel safe from a material point of view to start with? What does mean populism? What is populism? I I believe, I, I think that populism is no respect for the time. A populist has no respect for the time. A populist imagines that it's possible to change everything, to solve a problem as soon, uh, without contrast, without problems. I'm not a populist. Mm. My culture is alternative populism. I think, I believe, I agree that the change, the real change, needs time. I have respect for the time. I respect for yesterday, for today, and for tomorrow. Forty years ago, when I started my experience from this room to let Palermo no longer to be governed by mafia boss, because in my chair, 40 years ago, where normally as mayor, mafia boss, I, if I should have said, I will let Palermo to be free from the government of the mafia in three months, I should be populist. We need 40 years to be able to say clear that the mafia does govern the city of Palermo. So I think that uh, in fight against the virus, we need to send a message of respect of the time. The people have to understand that it is not possible to solve the, the virus today, in one day, that we need time. It means that we need to respect the rules just to take care of the health, of our health, of health of our relatives, of the health of other citizens. And just for this reason, I say that the mayor is in some way something like uh, an educational agency. And as the mayor of Dublin said, if I, if I May, I should say that just uh, Irish and Sicilian are united because we both love the life. We love the life. So I can say that people in Palermo respected my orders. It is my merit. Yes. No. It's the merit of the prime minister. No. It's the merit of citizens. They love the life. Therefore, they respected my orders because they sometimes don't respect my orders. But when we speak about the right to live, they were really, really respectful because we love the life. In other, other country, other people love the money and they respect uh, first the money, then the life. Uh, other people respect uh, uh, other value. Then the life. Uh, I am Sicilian, I'm Palermita. I love the life. And the people love the life, respected my orders. I think the same is happening in your city that I love because I feel a little uh, Irish. Thanks. Thank you. Um, are you winning the argument, Lord Mayor Chu? Do you feel what, or, and what tactics are you deploying to win the argument when you're not winning it, you feel? In terms of COVID or in general, when it comes to uh, a local government? When it, when it comes to understanding the other, when it comes to accepting science uh, rather than promises. Well, we are, and you can see it across the board when it comes to kind of the scientific facts of COVID in, in Ireland, that there are a, uh, a minority, a focal minority that will, uh, that does not accept the science or the facts or challenges it. But, um, there are the majority that have been 
really good in trying to keep each other safe, in trying to build that uh, community. And it's to um, uh, Marilando's point of people respecting life and respecting that uh, uh, of people's lives and opinions and, and keeping each other safe and loving life as well. By the way, Mayor uh, um, Orlando, uh, uh, feel free to come over to Ireland and visit that, that when uh, hopefully we get through to the other end. So uh, you <laughs> We can have a bigger chat or a longer chat about this uh, and our share of love things. But in respect to science and respect to um, the, the pandemic and people and the challenges, you're, the issue will always be that um, there will try to be a division. And we see this in various um, uh, political spheres across the world. You see it in the US, you see it in UK, where there will be a focal, a very focal, uh, um, usually the minority, that will shout very loud and challenge the facts and challenge the science, when really science is science. It's, it, it's there, it's evidence space. This is why whenever we have an argument, we say it must be an evidence base argument and we want to make sure that it is true information rather that whether that rather than disinformation that is pushed along because we are at the stage now where people are so polar or um, uh, there are divisions and countries are so polarized because people don't uh, take on the evidence-based um, um, arguments sometimes and they go with the in- disinformation that is filtered out there in various platforms. And I-, I think COVID is a great example because at the beginning of this, um, of, of COVID, you will see that within Ireland, uh, within Dublin, everyone was very united. Then it started in the last couple of months where there were trickles of, well, uh, people challenging the evidence behind ma- mass wearing, people challenging behind whether you should um, social distancing, and then actually coming out with uh, uh, remarks that COVID isn't anything to be worried about and COVID is just another like flu and, and, and it was all made up. But then how do we expect people not to be like that when we have one of the world leaders on a platform shouting that way? When you have people behaving that way and pushing out disinformation like that, then people, other people will follow. And that is something we need to, to, to look at. And we need to challenge and we need to say, when does this disinformation stop? When are we going to start basing our arguments based on facts and evidence? Thank you. One final point I'd like to ask both of you about. What lessons have you learned when it comes to the division of powers between central government and local government? Mayor what Orlando, I, quickly what with I you, think please. Is that, uh, I think I believe that the, the, the local authority has to play its own role. I am not the uh, prime minister and the mayor of the city. So I am more free on defending the rights of my citizen. I do not uh, produce uh, um, currency. I have no army. So my duty is to respect the daily life of the people, to respect human rights. Therefore, what I said is not only moral, it's not only legal, it's convenient, it's even economically convenient. Because the cultural change of Palermo is that we understood that respect the human rights is convenient. It's convenient. Thanks. There is no city in Europe so culturally changed like Palermo in the last 40 years. Uh, not Berlin changed, the Moscow changed, but changed in connection with international changes. We changed it, now changed constitution. We understood it clearly that the, what do we need is to respect the human rights. So, to respect human rights, we need to prevent, to prevent. So, I uh, just sign a order, just prohibiting in, the, prohibiting in the city of Palermo after nine o'clock to sell alcohol. And I'm sorry for the Irish beer, I'm sorry for Sicilian wine, but I, I love the life and I prevent the risk to die for my citizens. I'll drink to that. Lord Mayor Chu, what are your thoughts? What would you like more power? Have you had, you know, are you getting more power with the redesign of your role? Or I think there's uh, power. I, 
there, uh, there's definitely been a shift in power. I would I would like to see this role have more fat power, and this comes down to local government reform. And this is why we need a directly elected mayor within the uh, the city of Dublin. And it's a challenge that I will be bringing to national government with the other mayors um, as well. And the other thing is, I think we look at local government reform and the powers within council level. Your council right now are the ones who are serving the people. Of, of their ward, or, or the citizens uh, um, of their constituencies. And there's 950 councillors around Ireland. And right now, you, there's a distinct disconnect. They're the ones that are on the front line, and national government are the ones making the overall national decision. And there needs to be more power given to the local councillors uh, because we can see it with the pandemic. When it came down to it, it was the ones on the front line, like all frontline workers, were the ones who put in their work and were the ones who had to to keep their community and people safe. And not saying national government did not do their job, they did. And you can see it in the recent budget in how much they put towards funding. But overall, there needs to be a more balance of power between local and national government. Thank you so much both for a terrific conversation. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but I would like to um, hand over to Evo and have a good trip to um, Dublin. Mayor Orlando. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks not, a not lot. Now, uh, not right uh, now. Come in Parliament, see how <laughs> fantastic is my city. I am proud of the city that I love. Come, please. Good. Thank you both. Thank you both, folks. And when we are through this, hopefully in months to come, uh, do come back, uh, do come over to Ireland. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Irish beer and, chai and, and Sicilian wine, okay? Fine. <laughs> over to you, Ivo. Thank you.